What's up everyone and welcome back to another video. Today, as you can tell from the title, we will be analyzing Candace Owens public speaking skills. If you don't know who Candace Owens is, she has been becoming very, very popular the last couple of years. She is an author, she is a political commentator, she is an activist. I think you can see her a lot on Ben Shapiro's The Daily Wire show. She also has her own YouTube channel. Very, very active on all social media platforms. And the reason why I actually decided to take a closer look into her public speaking skills is because recently she put up a 45 minute video on her YouTube channel and all she did was got up in front of her camera, started speaking, and I felt like she gave the most eloquent, the most amazing talk, which was not prepared whatsoever. That is why I felt like, okay, you know what? We have to take a look at Candace Owens if she can get up and speak for 45 minutes without any type of preparation and just say what she needs to say, then this is someone that truly has a good public speaking skill. So let's take a look at what makes her so great. Let's take a look at also some things that might not make her so great and see what we come up with. So the video that we will be analyzing today is from her own channel called Candace, her YouTube channel. It is called Pull Your Children Out of Public Schools. I do think that this is a very problematic topic, but I think she's also very passionate about it and she has a lot of good points. She gave a lot of good points on her IGTV, I believe that she did, which is why now that she actually came out with a YouTube video, I was like, okay, this might be worth listening to. So let's dive right in. What are the children actually learning in school today? Well, first and foremost, they are learning that America is a fundamentally backwards and racist country. Okay, let's stop right there. So this is right her opening. She did have an ad in the beginning that I kind of just left out. So right away she says, this is what's going on. What I like that she did right here is that she went right to the point. She did not add in any fluff. She was like, this is what's going on. Boom, and she spoke. What I also love is that she's looking right at the camera with such an intense look. She's almost squinting her eyes a little bit. She has her hand out like this, almost like she's trying to convince you like, hey, wake up. Do you not know what's going on? That's what her body language is saying right now. Let's also talk about what she is wearing. I feel like these are things that most of us ignore, but your appearance does matter a lot when it comes to your public speaking as well. So for me, I prefer to wear more bland colors, colors that don't have a lot of patterns. So the shirt that she's wearing right now is yellow. There's so many things going on. It's almost a little bit distracting. I tend to avoid patterns and colors are okay. If she was just wearing a bright yellow shirt, I would have been okay with it. But right now her shirt, the patterns, it's very distracting. And if you are a speaker, if you have a very important message to speak about, you don't want to wear super colorful and super patterned clothing. So although I feel like the color is okay, it flatters her a lot, color is fine, but the patterns, the patterns are a bit too much. I do want to say that overall, I feel like she dresses really nice, especially I think on her Candace show. So this show specifically, if you look at her Instagram, she has some amazing outfits. I'll try to throw some photos here of a couple of things. Like for example, this polka dotted cream shirt with black polka dots or actually brown polka dots. Very, very nice. I felt like this was super attractive. It was still feminine. It was very chic, but at the same time, it wasn't very distracting. So I really liked that. And she also, there was this one more here where she actually wore this white cardigan and a white shirt under her hair pulled back the cute earring earrings very very nice let's see what else we can find here i think and this red oh, oh my gosh i think i absolutely loved this red outfit that she has on very nice material very sleek very stylish hair pulled back again cute earrings minimal makeup absolutely loved it so i do love the way she, that she dresses but for some reason, this specific outfit, I'm not a huge fan of only because it has too many patterns. Color's great, just too many patterns. Another thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to her appearance, I love her hair. It's simple, it's sleek, it's well done. So great job with that. One more thing that I've noticed that she does is she does wear makeup. 
and her makeup is always very natural. Now, again, when you are speaking, you are trying to get a message across. You don't want to overly do your makeup. You don't want to overly do your hair because again, you don't want your audience to be distracted. You want them to be able to pay attention to you and your words, not your appearance. I also love that she's wearing small little studs. Those really complement her outfit as well. Now let's keep going and look at what she's talking about and how she presents her points. They are learning that it is a good attribute. It is a virtue to hate your country. It means you're educated, you're woke. They're learning to undermine their parents. They're learning that their parents are also backwards and they're a part of that antiquated, old, backwards American culture that needs to go. They're smarter than their parents, which is interesting because right now, I believe we rank somewhere near 37 in mathematics, our children, and getting worse. So again, what I love here, it's straight to the point. Once again, we're only about two minutes in and one minute was an entire commercial or a sponsorship that she was talking about. We're only two minutes in, let's say we're one minute in because we'll take out the commercial and she is actually dropping statistics. Okay, we are 10th, 100th, whatever it is, we are at this number in mathematics. And if you can see her expressions, I do like that she shows a lot of expressions. Her eyebrows are squinted. She's like, can you believe that that's the number we're at? And at the same time, it's getting worse. So I love that she shows expressions through her face. That's really good. And a lot of us do not do that. A lot of the people and speakers that I watch, they're missing out on that. You have to remember, you're speaking to an audience. These are human beings, real people. You have to show those emotions. You have to show that frustration if you're frustrated, because when you're frustrated, people feed off of that energy and then they feel frustrated. If you're smiling, naturally your audience will feel more comforted and they will smile as well. So two things again here, she's throwing statistics, throwing facts, and she's showing lots of expressions on her face. Let's keep going. They're learning that breathing is a crime, that they're diseased. They're learning that they themselves are inherently racist if they have white skin or inherently oppressed if they have black skin. Or if you're like me and you have a biracial child, I don't know, somewhere in between, maybe half privileged, half oppressed. So I'll ask the question again, why are your children still enrolled in the school? And I want you to think about that and answer honestly. The end. Okay, couple of things here. Number one, I love that she's asking questions. Ask yourself, why are your children still in school? Now, whether you agree with this or not, we're only looking at her speaking style. We're not arguing what she's saying is true, what she's saying is right, what she's saying is false. We're not doing that. We're strictly just looking at her public speaking skills. And in terms of that, she's doing an amazing job. She's asking her audience a question. Why are your kids still in school? Think about that for a second. And she says it in a way that really makes you think. And that's what makes a good speaker stand out from a bad speaker. A good speaker really makes their audience think and asks them questions that are related to what they're speaking about. One more thing that I liked here is her actual tone. So when she's talking about a couple of things here, she does say, or, and she uses a strategic pause. And she doesn't just say, or, she says, or. So you can see her raising her voice and that's done very strategically. It's because she wants you to pay attention to the next point that she's about to make. So that raising her voice saying, or, and strategically pausing is very impactful. So she's doing a great job so far. By the way, I haven't seen this yet. So this is my first time watching this with you guys. And sir, if you're being honest, it is because there's nowhere else for them to go. This is a babysitting program. You're probably thinking, Candace, where else would you like me to send my children when we have to work? Me, I have to work. My father, my spouse, his father, we all have to work. So what do you want me to do with my children for six hours a day? That is what the government wants you to think that you Okay, let's pause here again. Something that Candace does, and I see her do this a lot, is that she asks the questions that she knows her audience is asking. So for example, she's saying, okay, well, now you're wondering, okay, Candace, where am I supposed to take my children? I work, my husband works, my father-in-law works, my everybody around me is working. So where am I gonna take my children? 
And she does that very strategically because she knows these are the arguments against what she's trying to say. When she's saying, pull your children out of public school, the first thing people are gonna say, okay, where are they gonna go? So as a speaker, she's doing a really good job in understanding her audience. She knows these are the concerns, these are the questions that are going to come up, and it seems like she's actively going to go ahead and answer those. So great job on that just because now she's being proactive, she's not letting other people debate her, and she's going to answer those questions that we are probably all thinking, okay, where are we gonna take our children if we're not taking them to school? Let's continue. You have no other options but to send your school, send your kids to school for free, by the way. It's free, it's free daycare. It's not free. Okay, let's stop here for a second. So as you can see with her hand gestures, she's going, but it's free. Why wouldn't I send my kids? Because it's free. She's almost mocking that argument saying it's free of course i'm going to send my kids to school where else are they going to go because i work my husband works my father-in-law works no one can watch the kids they don't have a grandparent to take care of them so of course so i love that she's doing that because she's almost mocking that argument with her hand saying i have nothing else i can do of course i'm going to send them it's free right so i love that she did that because again she's She's making us question our decision by doing that, which I absolutely love. Now, let's keep going. It's costing your child's mind. Right now in this country, the state is winning. The Department of Education played a very slow game. Maybe it started with some feminism, right? Climb the corporate ladder. What? So I like the way that she said feminism. We all know that Candace Owens, she is a Republican and she is not necessarily against feminism, but she does say that feminism has already played out its course and now we're overdoing it. So I've read her book and that's what she really means when she's making fun of feminism or she's mocking it in her way. So look what she did with her hands. She said feminism. She's almost saying that that's not important or that's silly or just feminism right so great use of body language on her part anytime she's talking about something as we saw the free it's free or feminism right she's using every part of her body to illustrate and make her point more clear so she's saying a lot with her body and i love that about her and again the expressions they haven't left for a second she's constantly making frowning and she's raising her eyebrows when she's surprised or when she's answering a question constant use of her expressions of her hands the feminism so she's doing a really good job as a speaker let's keep going why are you staying home and making dinner right women what are you doing you should want to be just like a man get to work get a nine to five get a title get a c title be the ceo of a company you are winning as a woman if you are just like men climb the corporate ladder and now all of our children are orphans. Okay, another thing that I keep seeing that comes up over and over again is her tonality and the way that she pauses. She stops for a good few seconds when she said something important and she wants you to take in what she's saying and then she begins on the next topic or the next sentence. So great use of her pausing. Pausing is so underrated. If you don't pause in between, then you're almost you're probably monotone and when you're sounding monotone you lose your audience so as you can see with her she raises her voice she brings it back down she pauses so there's lots of different variations which is making this so far a great speech or talk in a way let's keep going now we have no other option right because we have to go to work the state played a very slow hand if you're sitting here wondering what do they want what's the purpose of this i think about this all the time why would the state actively want to create a bunch of children who know nothing, who are failing at mathematics, who don't even know science, right? They're being told to, at the same time, trust the totalitarian science that tells them that they have to mask their faces, but also not to trust science like biology, which tells them that there are two genders. They have kids running around thinking there's 26, 27, infinite genders. They can be whatever they want when they wake up. They're actively teaching children to know nothing. Okay, so notice how she said, they're actively teaching children to know nothing. Again, using her hands, her hands, her body language is matching completely with her voice, 
her message and what she's saying. And I think she's doing a great job because when you're using your hands, you're emphasizing your points. Your hands are your storytelling tool and that's a great use of body language. And here she's, all we can see is waist up, right? So all she has is her hands, her face, her neck to move around and she's utilizing it the best that she can. She's using her hands to make points whenever she possibly can. And why? I'll tell you why. Because what the government wants is a bunch of passionate idiots. They want useful idiots. That is the reason why right now in this country we have never, listen to me, ever handed out more degrees and yet the kids every generation are getting dumber and dumber and dumber. I'm talking about standardized tests. You can look at them. The kids are getting dumber and dumber according to standardized tests, which is why the government is saying we need to do away with standardized tests. It's a form Okay, another thing that I like here, she's she gives examples, right? So she says, okay, they're getting dumber and dumber. And she's like, based on standardized tests, this is not my opinion. This is actuality. This is what's happening. So I really like that she's doing that. Let's move over to the end and see how she closes off her, her talk. We are intentionally churning out useful idiots. Nothing, none of the arguments, nothing will matter if these kids grow up and they belong to the system. America will fall. Okay, so this is the last one minute of her talk and notice the difference in her tone. It went from being up here, angry, very you know statement driven to now it's very emotion driven. Her tone has completely come down and she's saying, because she's pleading almost saying, hey, if we don't look out for our children, then America will fall. And the tone is so deep and it's so low because this is where she wants you to feel what she's saying is very important. So this is in the last minute. Let's keep going and see if there's anything more. I am passionate right now in speaking to mothers and in speaking to fathers and telling you guys that the time is now to pull your kids out. Bring your children back home. They will learn more in your household. I don't care how you have to organize. I promise you, you can do it. Organize with people down the street. Pull your children out of these indoctrination camps. Save the children. Save the future generation. And you will save America in the process. Now notice how she said, save your children, save America. So it's a very interesting choice of words that she's using here, save. Right? She's, she knows that she's talking to mothers. She's really trying to reach out to mothers because mothers are the ones that control their children's lives and decide where they're going, where they're not going. She's specifically talking to women and she's using words like save your children. What mother listening to this will not think like, oh my God, I need to save my children. So her last one minute, 30 seconds, I think it was only 30 seconds, was very emotional it was very it was rooted in emotion she's reaching out directly as if she's talking to a mother it's not like she's talking to all mothers it almost seems like she's talking to one mother you you are the mother and i'm talking directly to you that's how the last few seconds are of her talk so very interesting i feel like she honestly did a great job the reason why i love her as a speaker now this does not necessarily mean I agree with what she's saying or she does not agree. That's a whole new story. But what I absolutely love that she does is her use of the body language, of her tonality, the pauses that she uses, her expressions. She's great with her expressions. And I feel like this is what's really making her stand out. And also she's talking about things that really matter. So I feel like these are the reasons why her message is getting across to people because she is a great speaker. That is undeniable. No matter what you say, if you completely agree or disagree with her message, she is a great speaker. And these are some things that we can potentially learn and do when we are speaking. So I also want to hear from you. What do you think of this talk? Do you agree with what she's saying? Do you disagree? Also look at it from a perspective of just speaking. Do you like the way that she's speaking? What is it that you like? Pay attention to these things. What are some things that she did that really stood out to you? Also tell me, do you like her shirt or is it distracting for you? Because 
There were times where I felt like I was counting how many beads were on there and that's something you want to avoid. You don't want to wear something with too many patterns, something too distracting because it takes away from your, from your message. She's obviously a great speaker already. So even then, like even at that point, I'm still looking at the patterns and I almost for a second forget or don't pay attention to what she's saying. These are the things that you want to stay clear of. What do you think about her background? I do want to talk about the background quickly. I do feel like it's a good background. It's simple. There's not much going on. It's also blurred out slightly, which is, which is a great effect because then you hone in on the actual speaker. So great job with that for her. Tell me what you also think about her expressions. What do you guys think? Is it too much? Is it just right? And how do you feel about the last little bit where she got a lot more emotional and her tone got down? I wanna hear just your thoughts, your feelings, and yeah, let's talk in the comment section. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have someone else who's speaking skills that you enjoy or don't enjoy, you feel like this is absolutely what we should not be doing, do let me know in the comment section below. I would love to do a review on that person as well. It could be a politician, a celebrity, someone that you maybe see a lot of, which would be great. That is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you were able to learn from this and apply some of these things when you speak, when you're out there in the world. If you did like this video, also check out some of my other videos right here where I am reacting to other politicians, speakers, professors, anyone that you may be interested in, do check those out as well. And I will see you next time. Take care, bye.